Better Together as One podcast. I'm Margaret Wallace Duffy, and it's always a thrill to have my two co-hosts with me, Claire Gavin and Mr. Todd Miller. How are you guys? Good. Doing great. Good. So, you know, today, as always, we bring special guests to the table, but we are really excited to have three special guests with us today. We've been wanting to take a behind-the-scenes look at the realities of COVID-19 on the front lines. And we are so fortunate today to have three incredible frontline heroes with us to talk about their experience at Mountain View Residence and Terrace here in Georgetown. Now, I got to tell you, in my conversations um, before the show to talk about this, there were tears, there, were, there was laughter, but most importantly, there was inspiration and hope. And that is why I am so thrilled to introduce to you three very special people that truly have made a difference in our community. Anne LeBlanc, Christophe Summer, who is the uh, director and operator of Mountain View Residents, Anne LeBlanc is a, uh, a practical nurse and, and director at the, at the facility, and uh, Nicole Ivan Yusevich. Ivan Yusevich. <laughs> Ivan Yusevich. I've said it over and over, but I didn't want it to be wrong. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us today. And of course, we wanted to just say they are in their workplace and we want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules. That's why they're wearing masks. Um, it's really important to put safety first, so we're thrilled to have you. Anne, if we could start with you, could you talk a little bit about, let's look back in, into the early days of March, when the reality hit that COVID-19 was here and you have all of these residents, tell us a little bit first about what is Mountain View Residents and Terrace, and then let's talk about those early days in COVID. Well, Mountain View is a retirement home that provides uh, three levels of care. So we have fully independent residents, we have residents who need a little bit of assistance, and then we have full assistance, uh, full care for our residents. So we have the opportunity to provide the continuum of care for our residents and our families. Back, this started October, actually March first. Yeah, that was our first. It was our first day um, that we actually got put into a public health outbreak. But prior to this uh, outbreak, Nicole had been. Uh, put in yeah. provisions for our residents. Yeah, we uh, started that. Uh, we started doing up the paperwork for that in February, um, limiting anybody coming in at the at the by the end of February. We had uh, quite a few rules and regulations before you could come into Mountain View. Uh, by March the 11th, we started our daily meetings, mm -hmm. and March 12th is when we did a complete lockdown of our facility, and and we only allowed essential workers or essential visitors mm -hmm. only. So we still follow mm -hmm. compassion care, um, but it was it was just as of March the 12th, it was only essential workers. So March 31st was to consider the D-Day for us when we actually did get put into a public health outbreak. Um, we had sent up gentlemen to hospital a couple of days before that with what we didn't predict at the time were COVID symptoms because they didn't present as COVID symptoms. And four days later, we got a call saying that he had been tested positive for COVID. So that put us into a complete outbreak yeah. um, and it shut our entire Everything down. down. Can I ask you as healthcare professionals and compassionate people, because you, you weren't in this field without having massive hearts, what was it like from you, from your perspective? Um, if you can be just real and honest about what it was like from your perspective when you got that news and wanting now to, to know that you want to protect these families but also protect yourself and your family i think it was for me it was sheer panic it was i knew that if we didn't protect these residents who were our most vulnerable we were going to lose a lot of them and christoph and i had a conversation weeks back and i said oh i hope this never gets into our building because if it does it's going to wipe out our population and it was petrifying to know that it had gotten in Mm -hmm. We took so many provisions beforehand to try to stop it from coming in, and it was just such an unfortunate uh, time for us. Yeah. I literally almost fell to my knees. It was my my stomach fell out from the, in me. It was yeah. it was difficult to breathe, to take a mm -hmm. deep breath, and I think the hardest part for me was knowing all of the things that we had put into place, and yet still it came through our door. Yeah. Um, and then. Uh, 
we found out the news in the back office and we had to go out and actually tell all the we staff. We had to tell our staff, which and was probably was, the hardest yeah. to do, was having to tell them that this was going to, this had come into the building and this is, this was not going to be a necessarily good situation for us. But we had to be also be strong for them because we knew that if we fell apart, this was not going to be something that they were going to be able to handle. Yeah. You know, I had the honor of, of being able to come and speak to your residents and do a wellness workshop uh, back in the early fall. And I saw firsthand with my own eyes how compassionate and connected not just the staff, but the residents are. They become like family. I was welcomed when I came to do an education seminar. I can't even imagine also what did you have to do in order to let the families know this news? Now you've told the inside workers and your team, I can't even imagine how difficult letting families know. How did, how did you handle that? Well, that was actually uh, handled by myself um, by sending, we have, we're part of our free planning, we had all resident family emails. So at that point, we crafted an email informing all of the families of what had happened and how we were going to move forward and trying to keep every one of their family members safe. And part of that was full isolation into the rooms, mm -hmm. which uh, is still partially going on now. And even that in itself has high consequences on emotional and physical health of our residents. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that is part in itself. So for us, that day when we got that news, we were just heartbroken all around because we knew that COVID is going to give them and just alone the isolation of what the protect them. Uh -huh would lead to their health and mental health as well. That, that was part of it. Oh my goodness, you know, certainly here on this show and as, as healthcare professionals, Claire and I, we know firsthand the mental, physical, emotional, spiritual connection that they all work together. And as we look at, I, I've got my professional designation in aging and we all deserve to live well at every age and stage. But that population is extremely vulnerable. We know yes. that loneliness and isolation has tremendous negative outcomes and health and health outcomes. So, you know, it is a really complicated issue. We're going to take a short break here in a minute. We're going to come back and I want to dive into some of the stories of what you did to get the morale of your staff up. How did you keep all of the the residents um, calm and what you actually did, which was heartwarming. Uh, to give the wishes of some of the dying patients that are residents that were in your facility. Stay tuned. We'll be right back here at Better Together as One. Welcome back everyone to Better Together as One. We are lucky to have some first responders with us today and I just wanted to just extend on the conversation we were talking about before we went to break. Um, talk to us a little bit about you know, this obviously having a major effect on, on the residents that are there, but how this actually impacted the staff. I mean, this is the biggest thing. I mean, with staff, it's really requiring that's your manpower to support and how that sort of, uh, you know, landed with everybody when the news broke within the, within the residence itself. Well, a lot of us, you have to remember this retirement home, a lot of us, this is not just a job, the family. And when it hit Mountain View, um, it hit their families. And unfortunately, when it hit the residents and it hit us, it also hit it hit a few of our staff members. So we had some staff members that were becoming uh, fall, falling ill, which became very overwhelming for us. We were losing staff members to being ill. We were losing staff members for other personal reasons and not being able to come in because of their family commitment. To their, and then we ended up losing our agency staff, as Chris can give you a little bit more information about that. We had uh, our like, agencies coming in to look after our residents for uh, people who are already going through the palliative care due to age related uh, health concerns. Uh, then also, just workers coming in uh, who gave them showers on a daily basis, wound care, and breakfast mm -hmm. from uh, Liz supported uh, agencies who all of them hold out over them. So now, not only did we just lose 25% of our staff due to either having COVID or family issues. Now we lost an entire workforce, which our staff had to take over, mm -hmm. which at that point was undue stress and pressure on our, our remaining staff team, which I'd have to say really did pull together in, in many fashions for, for all departments yeah. to, uh, to look after our residents' mm -hmm. well being, not just mental and physical. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah, I, it, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Sorry, Todd. It's okay. I, it's, it, yeah. So it sounds very much like you were moving bodies around like of the remaining staff to get whatever was done. And it sounds very much like there wasn't any of that's not my job. I'm not going to do that. It was literally people jumping in saying, what can I do? Every single staff member um, worked together as a team, every single one. And we relied on each one of us um, to help us uh, not only uh, um, manage with our residents, but a lot of them ended up uh, helping us even coming up with saying, okay, well, this resident's not eating very well, or this resident, they would give us warning signs too. We had a many, many multiple programs set up to find warning signs. Um, but every single staff member was a very, very key element. And there was no, oh, I'm a housekeeper. Oh, no, I work front desk. Oh, I'm a PSW. I'm a nurse. Every single person was a caregiver. Yeah. And we were all oh. as such. Uh, we, a nurses week was celebrated with every single staff member. Um, we had multiple parties. <laughs> Multiple, so, multiple celebrations. Yeah. You know, that's what this show is all about. We truly believe better together as one. And I think one of the positive silver lining in COVID is that it's taught people that as a collective, we have to work better together. Yeah. However, that's not often the case. And I, I just want to commend you um, in our community for being shining lights and and for really banding together. I, I have been watching your Facebook page and seeing some some you know heartfelt videos of things that you're doing can you speak a little bit to and although this is heartbreaking and i know it's painful to talk about but it's necessary to talk about and that's you know some of the residents that you lost but before they passed away you were doing everything you could nicole to ensure that they were um in the best get, being given the best care and and their wishes were being seen you shared a few um stories with me do you mind telling a couple of those to, to our viewers? I know one resident, um, we, because we do provide compassion care, so her son was with her um, and she was palliative uh, beforehand and, and um, she was declining rapidly and she turned around one day and she hadn't eaten a, like a meal meal in quite some time because she had swallowing issues. She turned around one day and she says, I feel like a steak. <laughs> and my son looked at me and says, she wants steak. What do I do? I said, let's get her steak. <laughs> so we got her a steak. Yeah. Um, we had residents who, you know, they, they absolutely loved uh, certain songs or they needed, um, we would go out and we would sing to them. We did daily parades for the residents uh, every single day. We did face time with the residents so they were always connected with their families. Um, we use our own personal phones. Uh, I had uh, every morning I'd call Bahamas the, for this one person so that she, he could see his mom. Um, I, we did it. Whatever we could do, whatever they requested was made possible. If they wanted balloons in their room, they got it. They wanted someone just to hold their hand, they got it. Uh, they needed the Bible read, we did it. They wanted the rosary, we Googled the rosary beads and how to say it, and we said it to them. Um, there was FaceTimes with families yeah. while residents were actively passing. Yes, because we that, wanted them to be connected, because right? Because we wanted them to be connected. There were um, messages that families would send that they wanted us to read to families, and yeah. people would read messages to, to the residents while they were passing on the, res on the family's behalf. Yeah. Uh, we had one resident who was absolutely heartbroken because his wife had passed on and um, I couldn't find any photos of her. So I found one on the computer that we had taken of her a while ago and I printed it off. I made a big giant copy of it for him. And uh, that actually went with him when he passed. Um, oh. because he, we know that he would want that piece of her with him and the family is very grateful. Um, and we had the picture up so that no matter what, that's who he saw. He saw his wife, because uh, we thought that that was very important. Uh, it's a, it's an honor and a blessing um, to be able to be that person to hold somebody's hand at that time. Um, you're giving them, you're, you're giving them um, dignity. Indeed. So beautiful. 
I well, uh, just... to be, I know Mar Margaret's like breaking up here, and I'll give you a moment. But just <laughs> I, <laughs> I got both of them holding my hands right now. I know. <laughs> just know that there's no words to describe. You know what you guys do is a calling. I think you probably understand and know that. And there's not enough words to say thank you. Not even I. You know, without knowing these families, but you know what you do is is an incredible incredible thing and I hope you understand what you get up and do every day is just a massive gift. So congratulations for having the strength to be able to do this, especially in this incredible pandemic that we face. It's amazing. Yeah, you know, and these tears are real because um, this is what matters in life, right? Human connection and community and coming together is what really matters. And you guys have clearly been an example of that. We're gonna take a break here in a minute. When we come back, I, I wanna dive in a little bit to what are we doing um, to help you with your mental health and to help elevate you because that matters to us as well. And there's also a really neat thing that you're doing for some of the graduates, um, the students that are working. So I cannot wait to share the creativity and the fun that you're also bringing during this difficult time. So stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Better Together as One, and we are with three amazing health professionals from Mountain View Residence and Terrace. And uh, I found out that your motto is care, compassion, and commitment. And based on the last segments, it's clearly been demonstrated. These stories are incredibly hard to hear, let alone experience. I can't imagine being part of that wonderful team, but what strategies are you employing to manage the mental health aspect of both your staff and, and patients during this crazy time? Um, the very first morning uh, when we came in after we got our diagnosis, uh, everything changed in our dining room and it was, it was like a smack to the face to all of our staff. It was like, oh my God, this is actually happening. This is real. Um, many staff members were very upset and very, uh, it, 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 was, it was hitting us hard. Tearful. Um, they were tearful, um, uh, shaking, uh, didn't know if they can do it. They didn't know because remember these residents, they're like family members to us, they're friends to us. Some of them were actually my best friend. Um, so it was very difficult. So I put on a song, it's called Funk You Up. And uh, <laughs> Uptown, Funk You Up. So I put that song Hello, Bruno Mars. It was in, the, in the dining room. Um, and we all actually made this giant circle and we started dancing within the circle. We would call people out to it. Uh, to this day, I still have, staff members that will say to me that that was their defining moment on how we were going to cope. Um, we were going to cope with laughter and we were going to cope together and we were going to cope holding hands and with like a family. And since that day, that's exactly what we've done. We've shared lots of tears, but we've also shared lots of lots and lots of triumphs um, and ex extreme amounts of success stories, uh, even from watching someone who is extremely ill uh, to walking across his room, someone who was, was not able to move to somebody who would actually be able to sit up all by himself again. So we have incredible, incredible victory stories. Um, for the rest of them, for the mental health, um, we have a, a meeting held every single day at 9 a.m. Uh, this meeting was, it didn't matter what was happening in the world, this meeting was happening at 9 o'clock or 9, 9.10. Everyone waited for it. And at the end of our meeting, we all, we all talked about everything that was happening because again, we're a team, we're a family and we have to connect together. If, if they don't know what's happening, then how are they supposed to do the care? Uh, so we were very, very open and straightforward with everybody. Um, we would had a prayer for any time someone was ill and we came up with our own prayer um, and we said that uh, at our meetings. And then at the end of the meeting, every meeting closed off with, if my heart starts beating like this, what do I do? Uh, we have a mental health board that I put up uh, so that people can uh, go and get, the, like it's not, uh, 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 someone to help you is not one fits all. So we had to actually go and see, you know, different health care providers that could help us with mental health strategies. And they all volunteered their time. Uh, they volunteered and, and offered these services for free uh, for quite a few months, actually. Uh, they were going to revisit it in June. 
Um, when my heart starts beating like this was grounding. It was something that it was done every day where they, every single staff member would say something that they can do um, to, to ground themselves. You know, look at, looking at the light, take a deep breath, go for a walk, gra uh, uh, talk, to talk to a friend, um, take deep, like, listen. Um, so it, it helped them out quite a bit because it became something that was very open and talked about. Um, we, we, there's again, no secrets. So it's like it, we shared all of our, our issues. If someone was having a hard day, we can open up in front of each other because we felt safe with each other. There was nobody that was saying, well, I, you shouldn't feel that way. Everybody was saying, oh my gosh, I feel that way too. And I'm here for you and I support you. Um, so we're incredibly lucky with the staff we have. Uh, for our residents, we did uh, multiple uh, wellness visits through, throughout the day with them. Uh, at one point we were going around hourly uh, and then we'd also have quite a few visits where we had somebody that went door to door, had the resident walk over to the door so we could monitor their walking, how their mood was, if the, how they were eating. Uh, ask them if they wanted to play any games, ask them to do some dance exercises at the door with them. Um, ask them if they were having any issues or problems that we can address and we can help fix. Um, uh, so we wanted to make sure that they were constantly moving, right, and constantly doing things. And we are, again, all of our staff are, are all included in all of our choices that we do. So we had staff members that said, you know what, I'd love to go outside and just show the residents my parade. So that's what we did. And we did a parade every day around the facility dancing like a Zumba, Zumba class. Uh, we also sent out newsletters every volunteers. three days that would, yeah, volunteers, volunteers came, come in. We had they, had churches, the call, it, yeah, we had a lot going on for them. After the parade, when we had to get people contacting yeah. us, asking if they could join and do something. So we would have, we had a little girl come in and do Irish dancing. We Aww. had a group, Smiles. Oh, Smiles Are Essential Smiles came in. Smiles Are came um, in. The pipe bands came in. Um, we've had lots of different people that have come around and said, you know what, let's, let us help you. And our community has been absolutely phenomenal. The, the compassion and care we've received from our community and the outreach of, of support has just been incredible. Wonderful. Well, there's another very special thing that you're doing that's near and dear to our heart. When I heard this, I am a mother of a daughter who is graduating this year. And as you know, it's heartbreaking when they can't uh, have a prom. But if you work at Mountain View Residence and Terrace and you're graduating this year, we got you covered. Because oh, can, prom. <laughs> can you believe this? You are hosting a prom yes. For, yes. for your students that work at Mountain View Residence. Can you yes. briefly just tell us about this and even promposals oh my God. Being done yes. to come yes. to this prom? I, I commend you. This warmed my heart. Tell us about it. Well, the proposals we actually personalized for each person. Um, you got to remember, if they were getting asked to the prom, it would be by their girlfriend or boyfriend, right? So uh, we would make sure that it was a very personal proposal to them. And you can see them at a later time. They are all on our site. Um, uh, we have the theme called Under the Sea. Um, and it's celebrating everything that these guys have done. I mean, we've got one person who's been in university for eight years. She's worked so hard. She's graduating. And it's her prom and, she, and her graduation, she's got nothing. Another student who is four years. Uh, graduating from university again, some from college, and multiple from high school as well. These kids deserve this. These kids you deserve bet. that recognition of their hard work, their dedication of what they put into it. This is the, this is the moment, their defining moment going into their future of what they're going to do. I mean, they're letting they're it's it's that next stepping block, right? So. Why not celebrate? We need to celebrate. Um, so yeah, our theme is under the sea. Um, we're going to have uh, photographers. We're going to have uh, awards ceremony. Um, where we've got a flash mob coming in. Uh, and that's all done by staff. Okay. <laughs> this isn't outside people. This everything's done by staff. But that's why we love our staff so much. This staff is truly a family. And this staff knows that this is really, really important to their co-workers. So they're all pulling together to make this extra special. Um, we're yes. going to have a nice buffet set up. 
Uh, the award ceremony is going to be one of my favorites because, of course, it's the most likely. And you can't have a prom without prom king and prom queen. So it just goes without saying. Well, I got to tell you, you guys oh, have yeah, gotten beyond. Residence. This is that we've turned into a high school here. So we've put this <laughs> up for all the residents and the staff members to vote on who's going to be the next prom king and prom queen. Oh, um, my who's goodness. Who's most likely to brighten your day? We have a whole... I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but we have a whole list of most likelies. Um, and I think that, yeah. It'll, yeah. Be, it'll be live for the residents to watch as well. Yeah, and, the, and our prom is going to be live on our TV show, because we do have an in-house TV show where they get to see us. Um, so that'll be live in their rooms, and they get a chance to participate it through our, our open conference call, uh, which is uh, 007. So, and we, we're also actually looking forward to uh, what you were talking about earlier, which is part of the nationwide graduation celebration. I am so on that. Awesome. <laughs> like, perfect. Well, and they worked hard. Um, yes. You can't take that away from them. And, and I think a little bit of, uh, and if nothing else you get, learning how to smile, learning how to laugh, and keeping that keeps you one foot forward. Yes. Well, we have to wrap it up. Uh, bravo. Thank you so right. much for coming on and sharing authentically. We are so excited to have you part of our Better Together as One virtual prom across the country. Um, and of course, you have a documentary coming out that we will be sharing here as well. So on behalf of our Better Together as One team, we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for taking care of some of the most vulnerable population. And we look forward to having you back on the show. Take care. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me today. Now, until next time, everyone, stay safe and stay well. And remember, we're better together as one.